And howdy, everybody. Welcome to the word number 182. You can play with those numbers all you want. That's where we are. Thank you for coming today. That today we are starting the book of Romans. Of course, with chapter one, two, three, four, and five. As usual, though, let's go ahead and pray in. Father, thank you very much for allowing us to come together to fellowship, to study your written word that we have here with us. And we would ask for you to pour out your spirit of knowledge and understanding uh, on all those here now and in the future so that they get the message that it is that you need them to get, need all of us to get. We thank you for that. Uh, we would ask for you to, to move with those who are uh, having struggles of faith right now, uh, especially as they see prayers are uh, as being unanswered um, rather than they need to conform to your will. And we would just ask that you enlighten these people and, and show them. And we are very grateful for everything you've given us, calling us to, to be your children through your only begotten son. And thereby inheriting everything you have. Thank you, Father. We love you. In Jesus Yeshua's, Jesus Yeshua's name. Amen. All right. Let's get rolling on this, shall we? Romans chapter 1. Let's get the screen share ready. There we go. The letter to the Romans, chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end ye may be established, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but was led hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen 
being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Romans 2. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, 
Dost thou commit adultery, thou that abhorrest idols? Dost thou commit sacrilege, thou that makest thy boast of the law? Through breaking the law dishonorest thou God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? For he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Romans 3. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea. Let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner, and not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Romans 4. 
What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them, who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had, being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is a faith, that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also, which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not, as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Romans 5. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commandeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, 
and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered, that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay. Alrighty. Look at that tiny little head. Look at that wee little head. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get serious. Shall we? Back to Romans 1. Okay, a bunch of general notes to start off with. Uh, 1 through 7 is basically Paul's opening greeting. Uh, 8 through 10, he's saying, I want to come see you guys. Uh, 11 through 12, to share our mutual faith. Um, 13 through 15, to preach the gospel in Rome. And 16 through 17, the same gospel of faith to all men. He says Jew and Greek here, but it's all men. All right, whether they're of Judea or of Rome. If you got any comments, questions, put them down below. You can put them in the chat, but I won't see them probably. Okay. And it doesn't help to answer in the future for other people. Okay, now verse 18 here. <clears throat> What is going on now? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against what? All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They know the truth, but they're going to twist it to make excuses for their unrighteousness. And their ungodliness. Raise your hand if you're guilty of doing that. Okay. Uh, verse 19. They have been shown. It's been shown to them. Verse 20, they have no excuse. Nobody, no man has any excuse. Nobody in the race of man has any excuse. Because you know. And 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. Vain is Greek word 3152 means to render or become foolish, wicked, or idolatrous. Imaginations. 
Greek 1261 in their discussion, their consideration, their purpose, their debate. Idolatrous in their discussion, in their debate. Wickedness. Verses 23 through 25, they changed the glory of, an, of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to a corruptible man. Right? They turned the truth into a lie, worshiping the creature over Yah, over God the Father. Now, verses 26 to 28. There we go. That is generally ascribed to woman, woman, man, man, sex. But this reprobate mind, right? Reprobate is Greek 96, unapproved, rejected, worthless. Mind is intellect, mind or meaning, this, this worthless intellect. It's more, it's a lot more than just that despicable sex that everybody likes to point out. It's everything rejecting our Father's hand in the creation around us. And perverting the uses thereof, whatever it may be. Whether it's the body of a man or the body of a woman, or how a tree is used, or anything in creation, right? Why was the earth destroyed in Noah's day? Because the heart of man was continually evil, and all the earth had become corrupt from his ways, or perverted in his ways, his ways, not man's ways, they corrupted his ways. Man's ways are... The definition of corruptible. 29 through 31. This is the fruits of their unrighteousness. Right? Everybody wants to focus on the homosexuality. What about this? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness. I need to get that new Ford. I need to get that new sports car, new bass boat. I need to get a canoe, new sewing machine. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. Deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Verse 32, they know. They know the judgment of God is coming. Do you, in the past, having done those things, did you know you were going to be judged for it? They that commit such things are worthy of death. They not only do the same thing, 
but those that have pleasure in those people doing those things. What about when we're watching all these things come to transgress in a movie? Aren't we taking pleasure in those unrighteous things or a TV show? Romans chapter 2. He's continuing on this same theme. Okay, verse 1. Man, as a judge, is without excuse. This takes us back to verses 29 and 31 in chapter 1. We are without excuse. There's no excuse. Verse 3. Yah, God, sees you and will judge you. None of it is hidden from him. Why do they hate God so much? Why did we hate God so much when we were in that walk? But verse 4, Don't you know that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? His, good, his goodness leads you to repent from your sin. In verse 6, he, our Father, you're going to be judged according to your fruits. You're going to be judged by your fruits, by your deeds. Whatever you do, anything you do will be judged. Verse 7, some do well. In verses 8 and 9, those who don't do well, they get tribulation and anguish. Why is this happening to me? Right? Doesn't matter if it's in a church group, in a faith group, in a Torah group. There are people that are saying that. Why is this happening to me? What did I do? Why am I experiencing this tribulation? Why am I in anguish? Why are you in anguish? Doesn't matter, though, who it is. Doesn't matter what your race is, whether you are a genetic descendant or someone being grafted in. Right? Verse 10, glory, honor, and peace to those that are the good workers. So what's the difference between the person living the blessed life that's sitting next to the person studying the same scripture whose world is horrible and everything is going wrong. Why me? What's the difference? Go back and look at this whole checklist again. See if you can figure it out. Verse 11, he's no respecter of persons. Doesn't matter if you're wealthy, if you're penniless, if you have prosperity or you don't. Doesn't matter if you're popular or you're not. He doesn't care. Your position does not matter. You will answer to him for your actions. I will answer to him for my actions. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot better going to him now in discussing those actions than it's going to be on the mandated, mandatory judgment day. Verse 12. 
verse 12. You are, you will be punished whether you have or do not have Torah. Whether you are putting yourself under God's law or not, you will answer to our Heavenly Father. 15. Right? They're conscious. If they don't have the law, or if you do have the law, your conscious is going to bear witness against you. You know, like the thing they plug into the car to see what the, the fault codes are. Well, our father is going to plug into your conscience and your faults are going to come up. The question is, is it going to come up as a past fault with the code Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, or is it still going to be there? Down to verses 20 through 22. Right? Question for anyone teaching that people have to follow the law to get righteousness. Are you following that law? Or are you a hypocrite? Verses 28 and 29. Right? God will measure your heart, whether you are with the law or without the law. Circumcised or uncircumcised? Okay, let's go to chapter 3. Now, this is an interesting statement here, verses 1 and 2, right? Because to Israel was committed the oracles or law of Yah. And because of that, they had a jump start, right? Remember what we were just studying in Acts in the book of Acts, where some people came and said that the Gentiles had to be circumcised. So Paul and Barnabas go trucking back to Jerusalem, tell them all the things about the Holy Spirit being poured out on the Gentiles. And they said, okay, these four things, let's start with that. And then when they go to the synagogue every week, they can learn everything else basically what was said. Because those of Israel, those of Judea, were given the law, they had a jump start. They were raised in it from the beginning. Right? Is that the advantage? Yeah, that's the advantage. They were committed, these oracles. You know, how many of us <laughs> how many of us have a car for years and then something goes wrong and we pick up that owner's manual to look in it? That's what the law is, that's what the Torah is. It's your owner's manual for this vehicle, for this vessel, like a ship vessel. Sailing. <clears throat> or your car needs shocks. Verses 3 through 9. Summary. Law or not, all people are under sin. Everybody. Verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. 
Well, where is that written? It's written in Psalm 14, verses 1 through 3, and it's also written in Psalm 53, verses 1 through 3. It's not. Yeah, Paul is abbreviating it here. It's about four or five verses. Well, three verses, one through three verses, right? Come down, big skip for me. If you got any comments or questions, put them down below in the comments. Verse 19, right? Now, we know what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Torah, the Mosaic law, will not justify you or make you righteous. You still become guilty. You are still guilty before God. There is none righteous. No, not one. Twenty-one through twenty-six, biggest biggest part of that right now. But now there is righteousness without the law in Christ Messiah. Right by faith of Jesus Christ unto all who all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. You can take your chosen people lie and see if the fires of hell are hot enough with that. Just write it down on a piece of paper. Stick it over the lake of fire and see if it catches on fire or not. Because these are God's chosen people, those who have faith in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, not those who reject him, those who accept him and believe on him. Verse 24, how do you get this justified, just being justified in Christ Jesus? Freely. Free. Freely. A real free. Not a, hey, remember that time when I gave you salvation? Remember that time when I gave you a spare tire for your car? You owe me. Justified freely. For what? What are you justified for? Verse 25. We get to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Stop it. Past sins. Stop it. How? 27. Justified. Not by the law of works, but by the law of faith. Twenty-eight. We conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Without the deeds of the law. But your good and bad works are still judged, right? That takes us back to Romans 2, verses 1 through 10. It also will drive later when we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 through 15. 29, he's the God of all, all people, whether they like it or not, he is their God. 
<laughs> that's going to be a rude awakening for some people. And then 30 through 31, is the law void because of our faith in Jesus Christ? No. We established the law. And then what? And then he jumps into explaining in chapter 4 how the law is established because we are faithful. Right? Basically the whole thing. Well, let's just look at the notes I took. Amen to this, right? Verse 8, blessed is the man to whom the Lord, whom Yah, Hova, will not impart sin. Verses 9 through 13 basically summarizes that Abraham's circumcision is a sign or a seal of his faith. He believed before he got the circumcision. But he got the circumcision because he believed. <clears throat> Verse 17. He is the father of many nations. That's the same word as Gentiles right there. Doesn't matter about the blood descendant. Not don't fall for that lie of the chosen people. We're descended from Abraham. You don't have Jesus Christ, the seed of Abraham. You don't have Yeshua Messiah, the seed of Abraham, descended from David. And if you do, then you're grafted in. Okay. People are in his seed in Yeshua. Yeshua is the seed, not a bunch of liars. Verse 21, if you believe the promise, right? You work towards that goal. <laughs> that, now this example he's giving Right? He was told, no, you are going to have a descendant. Everything is going to come through your seed by Sarah. He believed, so he did the deed to make it come to pass. What are you doing? What is the promise made to you? How are you moving towards that promise? If you believe that God gave you something, that our Father is giving you something through Jesus Christ, how are you moving towards that goal? <laughs> Abraham did the deed, right? So did Sarah at 100 and for Abraham and 90 for Sarah years old. Well, minus nine months, but are you going to follow through with it? Or are you going to make excuses? Well, I can't do it because this isn't how I think it should be. And that's not how I thought it would be. Follow through on the promise. Do your part. Are you going to invest the coin that you're given? and earn interest on it, or are you going to bury it and give it back to God? Here's your dirty coin that you gave me. I didn't lose it. It's going to be taken from you. 23 through 25. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also. To whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up 
Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and raised up again for our justification. Why are you worried about the world? Our Father told us things would happen, so make them happen. Chapter 5. How does this happen? We are justified by faith, and when we have that faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through Yah, through our Messiah, Yeshua. We access grace. Now, this word grace is 5485 in verse 2. Greek 5485, meaning gratitude or graciousness. See, that's a lot different than the modern connotation of grace. Graciousness, okay, yeah, that could be grace. But the gratitude, we have access by faith to this gratitude, this thankfulness. Verses 2 through 5, this is our path in faith. Now, this takes us back again to Romans 2, verses 8 and 9, right? Right? Two verses eight and nine. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish. <clears throat> Starting in verse two, by whom we have access, faith by faith, into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. That's our path in faith. At some point, you have to move past the tribulation and move towards the promise, the peace, right? The patience, the hope. Who did Jesus Christ die for? Who did Yeshua Messiah die for? Christ died for the ungodly. Right? Verse 8. Everybody always says verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Inconveniently stop right there. Verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Remember back in the beginning, right, of this? Everybody has a part in the wrath towards ungodly men and women. There's your equality. We're we're all deserving of the wrath of God and have had a taste of it. Verse 10. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, 
being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Hey, you're my enemy, but come have a piece of this eternal life. Big skip for me, verse 18. The free gift, what is it? Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. The free gift unto the justification of life. What life? Eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life by Yeshua Messiah. All right, everybody. That's it. Told you it was going to be a swift kick in the gonads. We don't deserve anything we got, and we deserve everything we should have gotten. God bless our Father. Bless our Father. Work towards his promise. Don't, don't let it all be in, in vain. Dig up the coin and go earn some interest on it. Like, share, subscribe. Ring the little bell thingy. I love you all. Bye.